بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام uh, عليكم uh, thank you Shahed for the uh, kind words and nice presentation uh, I am so humbled and privileged today to be presenting among my uh, uh, wonderful colleagues uh, I would like to start by thanking Dr. Lamise for um, presenting the invitation for me to take part in this uh, amazing event uh, big thanks to the organizing committee and certainly thanks to the um, uh, audience who are staying late with us uh, attending and listening. Uh, I'll basically be uh, telling my uh, own uh, story with ABA services here in Kuwait in terms of what we have and what we don't have. And of course, what we do not have is what we aspire to, inshallah, again in the future. Uh, as is this going to be a story, and as any story starts with, once upon a time, there was me, I got my BCBA in uh, 2016, but I only moved back to Kuwait in 2018. Um, as the first and only BCBA holder at that time, I thought that I would come to Kuwait and see this clean canvas where I can just stand and plot my masterpiece of ABA services, good quality ABA services, to be available for all those who needs it. Instead, I came back to a very busy environment, an environment that is full of the good, bad, and yes, even the ugly. So the good is that we have about, uh, if I remember the numbers, 13 BCBAs, four BCABAs, and 18 RBTs actively private uh, providing ABA services in the private sector. The bad is that um, if you think of the health uh, Kuwait delivery system, the health delivery system in Kuwait or the educational system in Kuwait, it's divided into a private sector and a public sector. All the participants that I mentioned practice in the private sector. By constitution, if you think about autism, ABA services as a uh, evidence-based intervention should be available for those who qualify for it in the, in the public sector. So we all the certificates, as I mentioned, that we have belong to the private sector. So it's really bad that we don't have any ABA services in the public sector. Now, the ugly is that even within the private sector, there are certain phenomena. Um, most annoying of them, if I may say so, is things like um, the defaming of ABA um, by some businesses to market their own non-scientific services or interventions. Um, we have a lot of uh, behavior modification techniques that are camouflaged as ABA services. Uh, you have the insistence of some, uh, who, uh, some people who do not have the right qualification, insisting that what they're doing is actually ABA. Among other things that I'm sure are common uh, in many uh, countries in the world. So uh, I thought that I should, as an analyst, uh, dig deep and try to um, focus and find out uh, if I need to make any difference, then I really need to find out what factors or features constitute a successful system. That's the first thing I need to do, and then try to advocate to attain these uh, factors. Um, in 2002, uh, Dr. Gina Green um, pinpointed about 10 features that she found through literature review uh, that were common uh, across published studies uh, uh, that uh, treatment models uh, had in them. And I think these features are very important for us, uh, for all of us to know about them. Uh, one feature was the treatment has to be comprehensive, uh, which means that it has to address uh, all skill domains. So it has to be comprehensive. Another is that it has to be ABA-based. 
third is that it has to be done under the supervision of certified professionals. One more is that it has to be developmentally uh, based. Uh, five, parents has, has to be involved. Parents' involvement is very important. Uh, initially, it starts one-to-one, -one, and then it gradually uh, transitions to small group and large group formats, uh, formats when warranted. Uh, treatments uh, started at home, and then it transitions over uh, environments. Uh, programming uh, needs to be intensive. We're talking about 20 to 30 hours per week, all year round. That's very important. Um, in most cases, the duration was at least two years. And uh, most children started uh, with early intervention. We all know and agree about uh, early intervention. I started thinking about all these features, and I kept thinking that even if the system provides interventions that are comprehensive, developmentally based, provided one-to-one, -one, started at home, it was early intervention, two years duration, intensive, and parents were involved. Would all of that matter and make the intervention successful if it wasn't ABA-based? And even if it was ABA-based, would it be as successful if it was not done under the supervision of certified professionals? This notion made me, make, they made me think that these two features, that the intervention has to be ABA-based and has to be done under certified professionals, is my starting point of focus if I want to make any difference. So that's exactly what I did. And the way I could afford to do it is through raising awareness. So I started to raise awareness about ABA, disseminate ABA as a science, as an approach that has to be done by the right qualified people. I went with my word to families, I talked to other professionals, I talked to the community in general, and definitely to uh, decision makers. I did that through lectures, workshops, volunteer work, interviews, videos, written letters, and more. We did that, uh, I did that in schools, in Kuwait University, in the hospitals, NGOs, radio, TV, social media, just spreading the word. Uh, COVID-19 had limited the kind of modalities that uh, I was raising awareness, but uh, um, it, I came up with this idea of um, building a program consisting of uh, lessons in Arabic that would deal in uh, uh, different areas of uh, ABA. So we talked about uh, starting with the principles of ABA, pairing with reinforcement, uh, manding, um, problem behavior, um, errorless learning, prompting, listener responding, um, daily living skills, and we, the last lesson was um, about toilet training and we are still going. Uh, these are um, lessons uh, that, as, as I said, were provided in Arabic. They're at the level of uh, young professionals and parents. Um, they're accessible on uh, my account, uh, a roadway. And if you take a, a screenshot, you can use the, this QR to access the first lesson and then you can go on and watch the other lessons, or you can also access it on YouTube uh, using this QR or even uh, searching it under uh, my name if you type it in in Arabic. At this point, I guess there is one question that would be in um, anybody's mind, which is, was any of this fruitful? My own opinion is yes. Now, I admit, not very behavioral of me because I did not collect data, but I like to think uh, based on my observation that um, I did um, manage to get some success. Uh, based on what? Well, these are the observations. The quality of questions that people ask me, 
it used to be, you know, questions about autism, and I felt always the uh, need to introduce ABA and what's ABA and how is it translated in Arabic. Whereas now people come in with ABA based questions already. Another thing is that more inquiries about how ABA helps in cases other than ASD. I've been approached with um, neurotypical kids problems with their, um, uh, uh, we'll say, um, problem behaviors and how do we use ABA to you know, um, tackle those. Uh, also the complaints of some businesses that I ruined it for them because I've been getting called from people who would call these businesses and ask about whether they have ABA services and who actually provides them and whether they're certified or not. That's great. The increase of private centers seeking and applying certificates in their teams. So people are now seeking more um, uh, professionals in this area. Number of people, people seeking careers in ABA and requesting supervision. That means for me that you know, the message got across. Last but le not least, the number of blocks I got from haters. People starting to block me because mm, my message, I think, uh, rubs them the wrong way. So in conclusion, uh, creating ideology is a hard task. It's difficult in its own. But changing one, it's even harder. But I feel that uh, a door is opened and I'm very confident that it will um, take us into a good place and um, the change towards more appropriate services for our kids uh, given by the appropriate uh, professionals is coming very slowly, but definitely shortly. And that's the end of my story. Thank you for listening. Um, well, I will be more than honored and happy to cooperate in any level that the doctor likes. Uh, I'm very enthusiastic about this. Um, I think I don't want to say things that would get me in trouble, <laughs> but um, uh, I guess the um, uh, Kuwait Autism Center has a lot of growth to do. Uh, I, I, when I started uh, working on my um, raising awareness campaign, I did approach the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, the uh, public authority of uh, the disabled that we have in Kuwait, and everybody that I thought would benefit from uh, my message. I did not approach uh, Kuwait Autism Center because um, from my history of learning, they're uh, an SD and an and, and S delta when it comes to, to <laughs> um, uh, you know, ABA the way we wanted it to be. And so I guess what uh, I would encourage them to do since they are closed, they, they're not very open to, to outsiders. And, and I did, I don't know if um, other um, uh, BCBAs, uh, face the same thing, but I feel like I was very happy to come and say, I'm the first Kuwaiti who has BCB. I'm the only one to look at me and do as I do. You know, I was happy to do that. But I found that to be very intimidating when you are the first one with an American, you know, board certification, it's intimidating to people. And so I really had to back down and, and, and try to um, you know, talk to these people at, uh, at their own level. So I guess the advice that I would like if he um, can send that message to uh, the people in uh, Kuwait Autism Center is that they can afford to send people uh, on scholarships. And I think that's one of my messages when I talk to the uh, to PADA and to the Ministry of um, uh, Education is that we do provide uh, scholarships to the United States, States and they're for every uh, specialty and subspecialty you can think of, except for ABA. I mean, I studied ABA on my own expense and the other Kuwaiti lady who did her uh, BCBA also studied it on her own uh, expense. We didn't do that on scholarships. So I think opening the door for scholarships is very important. I mean, you can't clap in one hand. Yeah. Sometimes you can, <laughs> but uh, 
I feel like we need more. If you think about the number that I, I, I mentioned earlier, like 13 BCBAs, most of them, of them speak English, they don't speak Arabic. And there are only two uh, Kuwaiti BCBAs. And so uh, I think the first thing that we can do is encourage them to uh, get whomever they want to become certified. And that would uh, maybe start something there. From my end, I am totally, uh, you know, uh, open to any kind of cooperation. Thank you.